We love you. Marla and I and the Destiny family, we love you. We're praying for you and we're believing with you. Amen. We're so thankful and grateful for people just like yourself. Right now, share online, share, text somebody, tell somebody to get online and watch the service. I believe God has a word right now for each and every one of us. But again, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for loving Destiny and being such a great support. It's just a matter of time. We're all going to be back together again. Just like the video you just saw there, we will get through this together. Say that out loud. We will get through this together. There's power in unity. The Bible says one could put a thousand, but two could put ten thousand to flight. You know, there's something dynamic, supernatural when believers get together. Even though we're not in this room together, we're online together. And your presence online is felt all around the world because people around the world are watching right now and you commenting responding amen and sharing it start a watch party on Facebook whatever you're exposing people to the goodness the greatness of our God right now in the troubled time that we're living in we know our best days are still yet to come hey listen we want you to email us Send a video just like you saw. Just get your phone out, record it. Don't got to be special. It, it could be funny, quirky, whatever. Just do it. Give it a little clip. Email at destinywoc.com. Destinywoc.com. Email us there, that video, that clip. We want to get it together because this coming week at our Good Friday service on Friday night, we're going to have a party like there never was a party. Come on now. And it's going to be amazing. And then on Resurrection Sunday, next Sunday on Easter Resurrection, it is going to be amazing. And we want you to have that clip there because we want to get as many on there as possible of celebrating Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we just want to see you and hear from you amen so again thank you for coming let's give the lord praise one more time let's give the lord amen 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 well destiny we like to make a declaration of god's word before we get in it so whatever you're doing change your posture hold your bible up hold your phone up whatever you have that you're going to read the scripture from and let's declare together god's word say this after me this is my bible i am what it says i am i can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I will never, 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 never be the same. Come on, you got to get dog nasty about it. I will never, never, never never be the same in Jesus name 2020 is going to be my best year yet you need to shout it on the rooftops my best year yet amen 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 I love the Bible that tells us in Haggai chapter 2 that your latter will be greater than your former you know God's in charge of the time and the seasons he causes the sun to come up, and the sun to go down. He's in charge of the winter, the fall, the spring, the summer. God is in charge of everything. Never, ever forget. He's got your best at mind, and that's how you know, and I know that our best is still yet to come. I love what my wife was saying earlier, that we're living in a modern-day opportunity to see miracles take place see Bible recorded stories that God showed up in the middle of a drought and a famine middle of crisis when plagues were going on just like we're living today it is a Bible time and guess what just like Moses and Joshua and Aaron and uh, Mary and the disciples and Jesus was alive during the time to see magnificent miracles guess what you and I are living in that time 
So don't get upset, and fearful, and worried about the time we're living in. Listen, he's the same God yesterday, back then, as he is today. And if he did it before, he will do it again. One more time, let's give the Lord a shout of praise all over this place, all around the world. Amen. Let me pray with you today, and we're going to jump into the Word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today that ears are here to hear, hearts to receive. Every eye is open, Father. Every mind to comprehend what you speak to us today. Lord, let us have an understanding. Lord, let there be an impartation. Let it be a revelation to the hearer today. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, amen and amen. Come on, one more time. Amen and amen. That means so be it. Praise the Lord. Well, today I got a few people up here helping me. I need my amen corner. Would you give it up for my amen corner over here? I got them on the right and the left. We're trying to keep them social distancing, separation, but uh, we're doing our best. They've all sanitized. They've cleaned. We've checked their fever. We've checked them over. They're all good in the hood. Amen. So uh, we welcome you to our live service today. It's already been amazing. And uh, the powerful testimony uh, of Maddie there of seeing God in the middle of famine. Can you believe that? In the middle of a famine. She only had a little money, and she gave $11 tithe, and God turned it around and gave her all that money from the school. Come on, that don't happen and normally wouldn't be happening in the time you and I are living in, but you know what? But God. Somebody say, but God. He is a way-making God, and I know God's going to make a way for you and your family and your family's family. Today I've got a message for you today that I believe is going to be life changing and we're living in today is Palm Sunday and I don't know if you remembered that, I know many of you probably do, but it is Palm Sunday. It's the day that Jesus come riding in on a donkey and, and they begin to shout Hosanna, Hosanna and they took palm branches and was waving them and waving them as his entrance into the city. As Jesus began to prepare that week for his burial and his resurrection, when they saw the king coming, they began to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. And just in the matter of days, the same people that were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, and waving palm branches, just a few days later, they were the same ones that shouted, Crucify, Crucify. In Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9, in the New King James Version, it says, The king is coming. Rejoice, O greatly, daughter of Zion. And I like to say, O daughter of destiny, O child of God, O people called of God, rejoice greatly and shout, O daughter of destiny. Behold, Look now, that means your king is coming to you. And he is just and having salvation for you. Today I want to talk to you a message entitled, Help is on the way. Come on somebody, help is on the way. Come on, you need to shout it on the rooftop. Help is on the way. I prophesy to you Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, moms and dads, boys and girls, that help is on the way. Just like there in Jesus' time, when Jesus was coming in the city, they knew their king was coming, their deliverer was coming, salvation was coming, breakthrough was coming, miracles were coming, because help was on the way. And just as they saw their helper their deliverer coming in. They just didn't understand that God's process and timing is different than theirs. Because here he was on Sunday coming in, and then on Monday somewhere they didn't see it happen as quick. 
They didn't see the breakthrough happen. You know, God never does it when you think it should happen, when I think it should happen. God always does it when he has scheduled it to happen. See, here Jesus come in. Their helper was coming. Their deliverer was coming. Help was right in their territory. Help was right in front of them. But because it didn't happen fast enough, the same people that shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, shouted, crucify him, crucify him. It was the same people that put him on the cross. And friend, today I want to help you and help all of us not forget that help is on the way. And my first point this morning is help is on the way. Somebody shout, help is on the way. Number two, hope is here. Come on, somebody say, hope is here. See, our hope is in him, but his power is in us. Come on, somebody say, our hope is in him, but his power is in us. Come on, somebody give the praise to the Lord. See, help is trying to find you today. Help is on its way. And when you and I begin to look up, and we get our eyes back on God, get our eyes back on Jesus, because help is coming to us today. Amen. And what God looks for is hope in us. Come on, somebody say, help's on the way, but hope is in us. See, we are the people full of hope. Hebrews chapter 11 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. See, the fact when you're in hope, that means you're in faith. When you're in faith, that means you're in hope. Come on, somebody. When I'm in hope, that word hope means expectation. See, your expectation is his invitation. The more I'm expecting him, the more my faith begins to rise. See, he is the way maker. And help is trying to find those that have hope. I said help. It's trying to locate those that still have hope. In Zechariah 9, 12 says in the message translation, Come home, you hope-filled prisoners. Wow, that is amazing. Come home, you hope-filled prisoners. This very day, I'm declaring a double bonus. Everything lost return twice over come on somebody help is on the way and hope is here number three it gets bad before it gets better when I was writing these points out and I heard the Holy Spirit say tell the people today that it gets bad before it gets better Oh, pastor, why would you be so negative in a time that we're living in? We've already get enough negative information because I don't want you surprised. I don't want you to be surprised like the people that were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. See, they didn't realize it was going to get bad before it got better. They were shouting, Hosanna. They began to take their clothes off and lay them in the ground because they didn't want Jesus or his donkey to even walk on the dirt. It was such honor and such respect that their king was coming. But they didn't expect that he was going to be taken off that donkey, beaten and whipped and nailed to a cross and left there to bleed and to die for the sin of the world. See, they wasn't expecting it to get bad before it got better. But thanks be to God, death didn't keep him on that cross. Love did. It wasn't the nails that kept him on that cross. It was love that kept him on that cross. Jesus didn't just bleed on the cross. He bled all the way to the cross. And he did it just for you and just for me. Help is on the way hope is here come on somebody hope is here but it gets bad before it gets better see God will allow us to go through the wilderness before we get to the promised land and sometimes we get so confused in the wilderness to think God has abandoned us maybe God has left us Friend, no, 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 no. Don't allow that to happen. It might get bad before it gets better. But the good news is it's going to get better because help is on the way. Help is on the way. Come on, somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. 
Look with me in Isaiah chapter 40, if you would, Isaiah 40, amen, and drop down with me in verse 28. I'm going to read in the amplified version. What's that? It just amplifies what's being said. Somebody say, amplify what's being said, and I think we need to amplify the message of the gospel right now. We don't need to be quiet. We need to shout it from the rooftops. We need to amplify. We need to raise the volume up and tell it on the rooftops. Verse 28 says, Have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint, or grow weary come on somebody say thanks be to God it says there is no searching of his understanding listen you'll never be able to figure God out you'll never figure out why it gets bad before it gets better he don't want you focused on the bad he wants you to on the better come on now help is on the way and I've got to make sure I stay full of hope because hope is my expectation what is he looking for? He's looking for the saints, the people of God that have their eyes on him to expect him to do what he's always done. Verse 29 says, he gives power to the faint and to the weary. And to him that has no might, he increases their strength. Oh, come on somebody, help is on the way listen you might get weary you might get weak but let me tell you something help is on the way he increases your strength and he, re he renews your abilities he gives power to the faint and to him that has no might he increases their strength I just pray and declare right now in the name of Jesus that he's increasing your strength right now he is renewing your energy, and you're going to rise up better than before. It says, causing it to multiply and making it to abound. That word abound means over the top. Look in verse 30, it says, even the youth shall faint. Even young people may fall out. Come on, we never expect the young to fall out, the young to get weary. No, they're always the strongest. Everybody nowadays trying to renew their youth. Oh, I wish I could have my youth back. He says, listen, in what I'm talking about, even the young, they may fall out. Even the young may get weary. Come on now, put an amen. But even the youth may faint and get weary, and young men might get feeble and stumble, fall of exhausted but those verse 31 is where I wanted to get to that wait on the Lord whose hope is in him who expect the look for the Lord come on now their strength shall be renewed the King James says but they that wait upon the Lord whose hope is in him shall renew their strength Mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Come on now, help is on the way. See, he says, listen, those that are waiting, whose hope is in the Lord, where your help comes from, they're going to renew strength. They're not going to lose strength. They're not going to be depleted with strength. Their strength is going to be renewed. See, it often, in the past, I could not understand how believers kept a good report. It's because this verse right here. Those that their hope is in the Lord. That their expectation, that they're looking to the Lord where their help comes from, their strength is being renewed. Here's how I always found out that my hope wasn't in the right place. It, my expectation wasn't on the right road is because the more I was depleted of strength, the more I began to hear myself say, Lord, I, I don't know if I can make it another day. Oh, sweet Jesus, help me out. I, I can't watch another report on that news. I, I don't know if, it, if oh, two more weeks, 30 more days, what am I going to do? See, 
that means we're looking at the wrong direction. We're not looking to where our help is coming from. Or our help was in the Lord. I mean, our hope was in the Lord because we knew help was on the way. But we got just like the people that were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of our God. Just like those people, they didn't expect it to get bad before it got better. But see, God always goes, he says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Woo, sweet Jesus. It gets bad before it gets better. But don't get caught up in how bad it is. Get caught up in how great it's going to be. Because help is on the way. Hope is here. And number four, victory is ours. Come on, somebody say, victory is ours. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33, if you would. Uh, great. I, I heard the Lord say, tell them today there will be victorious reversals. Somebody say, victorious reversals. God is and will be reversing things for you that you come out on top. You're going to come out better, wiser, stronger, smarter, healthier than before. If you get your eyes back on where your help comes from. See, my help don't come from people. My help doesn't come from Washington. My help doesn't come from the doctors. Even though I submit to them and I pray for them and I hold them in high regard and respect because that's what the Bible tells me to do as a believer. But even though I hold them in an honorable place and pray for them, my hope is in him because he is where my help comes from. Come on, somebody. Jeremiah 33 been reading this over the last couple weeks in verse 3 says call unto me and I will answer friend have you lately called him where your help comes from and let him answer you we're calling everybody else we're looking at everything else and I'm here to tell you today to remind you to get your eyes back on Jesus get, get your hope back on God amen call unto me and I'll answer and show you great and mighty things which you don't even know. See, God loves it when I'm at the end of me and I can't figure it out. I don't know how it's going to work out. People ask me, Pastor, you think this is the end time? You think Jesus is coming? I believe we're at the end time. I believe Jesus is coming. I've been believing that since I was a little boy. We're living in the last days. But the good news is he's coming in the last days. So it's not nothing to be afraid of. I mean, I don't want to die. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to go to heaven. I mean, I want to, sorry, I want to go to heaven. But it's not like I'm ready to go today. But I am going to live like Apostle Paul. He says, for me to die is gain. You never will lose if you pass away tomorrow. You're never losing, friend. You're gaining. He says, I will show you great and mighty things to come that you don't know. The reason some of us don't know is we're not calling on him. We're not asking of him. And I beg and plead you today, call him. Ask him. Call him on the phone. Tell him what you want. Amen. Drop down to verse 11. He says, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, which is us, and the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Can you just pause right there? Can we camp out there for just a moment and let's let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord? And can we all say together, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Come on, if the Bible says ever, that means ever. Eternity. For them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And you know... 
I know you're not getting to come to the house of the Lord today, but because you are right now paying attention, focusing on getting this word in you, you're reverencing the house of God because it's being transmitted from the house of God to your house. And he says, let them bring a sacrifice of praise to the house of the Lord. Now listen, uh, what costs you may not cost me. What's a sacrifice to you may not be a sacrifice to me. Uh, me to come in here on this day in an empty room and, and I'm not getting nobody else. I can't hear nobody singing behind me. I ain't getting nobody to clap and amen. I've got to just amen by myself. I, I'm having to praise the Lord. It's a sacrifice of praise. Uh, all of these up here with me today are our worship team. And them to get up here and sing with no one in the audience to what they're used to, it's a sacrifice of praise. You to be in your living room where it's not normal for you to do that, and you begin to lift up your hands, you shut everything down, you're not cooking, washing dishes while you're trying to hear this. It's a sacrifice of praise. It, it's got to cost you something. See, God desires to be in your presence more than you desire to be in his presence. God desires to be in my presence more than I desire to be in his presence. I wish it was the reverse. I wish that I was desiring more to be with him than he was to be with me. Uh, what are you saying, Reverend? Listen, the proof that God desires to be with you more than you desire to be with him is he's the God that took his son, his only son, to use for a ransom, a sacrifice for praise for the children of God to be reunited back to the Father. That the veil would be ripped, that there would be no separation, no sin, no sickness, no disease, no poverty, no famine, no calamity could separate us from the love of God. See, victory is ours. How do I know? Because he tells us here that the Lord is good, his mercy endures forever, and says, let them that they shall say, praise the Lord of hosts. The Lord is good, his mercy endures forever. And let them bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. For I will cause it to return, to return the captivity of the land as it was at first, says the Lord. The Amplified Bible says, I will cause the captivity of the land to be reversed and return to as it was at first. Listen, victorious reversal, I declare in the state of Texas, in Colleen, in the United States of America and around the world that the same God back then is the same God today. And listen, if he was telling them, if you'll bring me a sacrifice of praise, I know you don't feel like it. I know it's not the right timing. I know all hell's breaking loose. I know the virus is getting worse by the day, but I need a sacrifice of praise. I need you to get your hope in me and realize help is on the way. Amen. See, God wants to reverse it, but he's looking who wants it reversed. Who are the people that wants the reversal? I am here. I want the reversal because help is on the way. My hope is in him. I realize it's going to get bad before it gets better, but I understand victory is mine. Somebody say amen. amen. Victory is mine. And number five, the battle is the Lord's. It is finished. Over 2,000 years ago, and this coming Friday night, got a special word for you, you don't want to miss it. But this coming Friday night, we're going to celebrate it is finished. When Jesus was hanging on that cross, and before he gave his very last words that came out of his mouth was, it is finished. And friend, it's finished. 
God is already reversing it. Well, it don't look like it. We're not looking to the circumstance. We're not going to be like the people that shouted Hosanna, Hosanna, and now we're shouting crucify, crucify. See, the reason they shifted on Jesus from saying Hosanna, Hosanna to crucify, crucify is he didn't do it in their timeline. He didn't do it the way they wanted it done, and he didn't do it when they wanted it done. But God never does it my way or your way. He's always doing it his way. Amen, amen, amen. I want to give you five things when I prepare to close here. You know what that means? Nothing. But go with me to Joel chapter 2. Joel, the second chapter. I've got just about eight minutes with you. Joel, the second chapter. Joel, the second chapter. I begin to declare this in October of 2019. It's talking about the former rain and the latter rain. See, we're in Passover week. We're in Holy Week this week. And this coming Wednesday starts Passover. And we're prophesying and believing that that virus is going to pass right over your house. Going to pass right over you and me because we plead the blood of Jesus. But that's Friday night's message. But we're in Passover territory. Come on, somebody say Passover territory. And God pays attention to certain times of the year that are significant to God. It's on his calendar, if you would. It's on his timetable. It's important. It's significant. In Joel chapter 2, in the latter part, verse 28 says, and it shall come to pass afterward, I'm going to tell you what afterward's all about in a minute, that I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters are going to prophesy, your young men are going to dream dreams and see visions. Amen. He says, I'm going to pour out. We know in the last days God is going to pour out his spirit. The good news is that if we're living in the last days, if this is the end time, guess what? Get ready because there's going to be a great outpour. It's not like he's going to start pulling it back. No, no, we're at the end. I don't need to give them no more. Time's running out. No, in the last days, God does it bigger and better than he ever did before. He's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh, not just the saints, but even the ain'ts. Come on now. God is going to do it bigger and better. Why is it here in verse 28? He says, and it shall come to pass afterward. Man, when I saw that word afterward, I mean, after what? After he returns? After what? He's not talking about after he returns. He's talking about after the former and the latter rain. Do you know the latter rain began the month of March and it goes through the month of April? It's just amazing how Easter and Passover is in the latter rain season of God. Come on. He's got this thing all planned out. Why are you tripping, boo? God's got this thing all under control. Somebody say, help is on the way. Hope is here. Look with me in verse 21. It says, fear not, O land. It's amazing God talks to the entire land. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. I can't tell you how important those words right there. Fear not, but be glad and rejoice. Come on, somebody say that. Fear not and be glad and rejoice. Why am I going to rejoice? Well, look what he says. For the Lord will do great things. Help is on the way. Hope is here. He says, don't be afraid, but Rejoice and be glad for the Lord's about to do great things. Now listen, my great thing is different than his great thing. His great things is different than my great things. Uh, I may say, hey, get ready. Pastor Chad's about to do something great. It don't even compare. When God says he's going to do something great, he's the creator of heaven and earth and everything in and on the earth. He parted the sea and they walked across on dry ground. Listen, when he says I'm about to do something great, Oh, my God, it's going to be great. It's going to be mind-boggling. It's going to be not normal. He says, be not afraid of the beast of the field, for for the field, for the pastures of the wickedness that do spring up like trees bearing their fruit. Verse 23, 
Be glad then, children of destiny. And I put in destiny there. I put the Roe family. If I was you, I'd write it in there and put it in your notes so when you're reading it. But the King James says, be glad, you children of Zion. That's you. That's me. Be glad, you children of destiny, the Roe family, or whatever your last name is. Put that in there. Look what he says. And rejoice in the Lord your God. Woo, Jesus, I'm about to buck and run up in here. And he will cause to come down for you. Listen, it's not for him. It's for you. It's not for me. It's for us. See, he's not doing it for himself. He sees you and I in our situation. But he says, you got to understand, I'm your helper but I got to find hope in the earth. I got to find somebody expecting because my expectation is his invitation. Come on, somebody. He says, uh, For the Lord's going to do great things. He's going to send for you the former rain moderately. Oh, you thought there was an outpour in October, November. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And he will cause to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat again. And the vaults will overflow with wine and oil. Well, oil always represents God's power. Always represents anointing. Always represents his spirit. And wine always represents joy. And being filled with joy. Unspeakable joy. That's what the Bible, when he says, I'm going to fill the earth with wheat again. And I'm going to give you oil and wine. In other words, I'm going to make you happier than you've ever been. You're going to rejoice more than you've ever rejoiced. And my presence is going to be there stronger than it ever was before. Come on. Because we're in the latter rain season right now. It started in March. And it goes through April. Come on. But see, he said, I'm going to give you the former and the latter at the same time. Come on. That's double for your trouble. Come on, somebody. Double for my trouble. Verse 25 says, and I will restore to you the years, the lost time, that the locust, the caterpillar, uh, the canker worm, what all of those things have done that come to destroy you, I'm going to restore to you all the time you've lost. Some of you, you've lost time at work. You've lost time. It feels like it's an eternity. 30 days, two weeks is an eternity. God says, don't worry about the time that's being lost because I'm the God that's going to bring you your help and I'm looking for hope and the battle belongs to me. And yes, it may get bad before it gets better, but get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, destiny. I'm going to restore all the years or the time lost better than it was before. My God, my God, my God. Look what he says. I will restore to you all the years verse 26 and you will eat in plenty which and you will eat in plenty and be satisfied and you will praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed come on somebody say no to shame you'll never be ashamed not another day not another minute because God's going to restore everything to you. It's going to be twice what it was before. And the Bible says, not only are you going to be eating happy, but you're going to be uh, satisfied. In other words, you're not just going to eat a little bit. You're going to have plenty. Right now, people are running to the grocery store and everywhere grabbing because they don't know and understand we serve a God of plenty, of more than enough, not just barely enough. See, we have a God that he's going to make sure there's plenty for you to eat, not just a little bit, not you got to go stand in line and wait for a handout. No, his people will never be put to shame again, and they're going to eat plenty and be satisfied. Several years ago, uh, I love spaghetti. It, it's my wife's spaghetti. It, it really is the only spaghetti I like. Her spaghetti is the best. It's the bomb.com 
my mom's tried to do it. Praise the Lord for my mom. I, I love it. Now, my mom makes something. I love that. But anyways, mom, don't get your feelings hurt right now. But she can't touch my wife's spaghetti. I've even had some people in this church. Oh, Reverend, you ain't had my wife's spaghetti. Or you ain't had my spaghetti. And I've had some people try. You know, they bring me some stuff. Here you go. Wait till Pastor t- takes my wife's spaghetti. And praise the Lord. Thank you for all that. Thank you for the effort. But uh, truth be told. Uh, as much as I love you, appreciate you, is that nobody can touch. So really, don't even try to compare with my wife's spaghetti. It's, it, it's a lost battle before it starts. Anyways, but I, she told me one Sunday years ago, honey, I'm going to have spaghetti for you when you come home after church. And I'm the type that, man, once I, you tell me what I'm eating, eating is one of my hobbies. Uh, it's like I'm locked on like a bulldog on a bone. Hey, don't change the menu. I'm already ready. So I go home. I walk in. I can't smell spaghetti. There's not even a taste of garlic nowhere in the air. I mean, it's nothing. I mean, nobody, you can smell it in the garage. I, I smell nothing. Walked in. All I saw was a box of chicken sitting on the kitchen table. I went, oh, ooh. What is going on in here? And next day, as quiet as a mouse, and I went to go into the bedroom and realized it sounds like she's in there asleep. Nobody's moving around. So I just, the more I looked at that chicken, the more I looked in the kitchen, there was no, no spaghetti. The upsetter I got, if that's the right word, the matter I got. I mean, I was going down in a hurry. Next thing I know, I am so upset, I let... My, my feelings take control of my mouth. I bust in my wife's room. She's asleep. And I said, where's my spaghetti? Oh, my God. F- covers flying in the air. Pillows and everything. Like a hurricane was happening. She buzzed by me. I stand in the bedroom door. And I mean, she buzzed by. I could feel the wind whoosh, right past me. I watched her. She walked over there. And she grabbed that chicken off of that kitchen table and she said here's your spaghetti she hit that trash can that lid popped open she threw that chicken into that trash can and says there's your spaghetti that chicken lid shut she turned walked right by me slammed the door went right back to bed I went oh my god what's going on here next thing I know you know what I did I went and I opened that trash can up and I got that chicken out. I knew that I wasn't going to be completely satisfied, but I was still going to be good. Amen. Listen, what I'm telling you today, friend, God is going to make you completely satisfied. Don't you let what you're looking at now, don't you let what you're going through now get you off course. No, he says you're going to eat in plenty and you will be satisfied. Help is on the way. All right, let me give you five things that the Holy Spirit gave me in this message today that I was to declare to you that you to get your hope in, get your expectation in. And I declare and prophesy this over you today. Number one, God's going to show up in such a miracle manifestation way, there's going to be unexplainable results. Somebody say unexplainable results. Listen, we're in a timeline. We're in the, 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 the first and the latter rain at the same time that God's going to pour out. You remember me telling you, he said the afterwards there in chapter Joe? Afterwards means after I send you the rain, the former and the latter rain, after you've eaten plenty, after you're satisfied, after I restore everything to you, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Get ready, church. Get ready, house of God. Get ready, church family. It's going to be unexplainable results. People are going to be trying to interview you. What in the world happened? How did you do it? What was you doing? Where were you at? You're like, I don't know. It's unexplainable results. It just happened. Number two, unchangeable breakthroughs. In the same way, you're going to be, I once was bound but now I'm not. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, all of a sudden I can see. I once was deaf, all of a sudden I can hear. I once was lame, but all of a sudden I can walk. Come on, somebody put an amen. Number three, unthinkable manifestations of healing. Next thing you know, everything the doctor has said, God has reversed it, and it's unthinkable manifestations. Who would have thought 
you could get healed over that virus. Who would have thought you had all the odds stacked against you? Everything was against you from the beginning. But God stepped in, and it's unthinkable manifestations. You couldn't have thought it to happen, and he did it. It's unthinkable manifestations. Number three, number, number four. You're in miracle territory. Miracle territory. Don't get lost or confused. Like those that were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Your king is coming. Salvation was coming. Deliverance. Unexplainable results was coming. Unchangeable breakthroughs unthinkable manifestations of healing they were in miracle territory but because it didn't happen when they thought it should happen when it should happen they started saying crucify he's not who he said he was because he wasn't doing it the way they wanted it done see the only way victory could be complete is he had to bleed he had to die he had to suffer, pay the penalty, defeat, death, hell, and the grave, and come up victoriously. Come on, somebody. You're in miracle territory. The last one, it'll be unexplainable miracles. Unexplainable. I've had people ask me, I was in and out of drugs, in and out of trouble. How did it happen? What were you doing? They want some type of formula. Did you do this? Did you do that? What prayer did you pray? Listen, it's unexplainable miracles because he's the miracle worker. I'm not the miracle worker. You're not the miracle worker. He's the miracle worker. And God does it, friend, the way God does it. Your job and my job is to realize help is on its way. Hope is is here the battles the Lord's and even though it gets bad before it gets better I'm not losing hope he's the restorer he's gonna put it back better than it was before they're gonna be unexplainable miracles I've said this before in the church that you're sitting around miracles you're watching a miracle right now you're probably the people in your house you're a miracle in that house because you could have never got you where you are today with God. It's unexplainable. You can't figure it out. All you know is to be grateful that it happened. Friend, can I pray with you right now? Listen, if you need a breakthrough, you need a miracle, you need healing in your body, you need salvation, whatever's going on right now, call the number on the screen. I've got a prayer person ready to pray with you and believe God with you. We've been having people call, we've been praying, people been getting saved, miracles are taking place. I prophesied to you today, put your hand towards that screen right there towards my hand. I'm telling you, you're in miracle territory. Right here, right now, God wants to do a miracle in your life. You're in miracle territory. We're in the latter rain, the former and the latter. At the same time, Lord, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain in Jesus' name. When I was growing up, I was always told that April showers bring May flowers. Just as it is in the natural that we're in a rain season right now, April. We're in a rain season and it's been raining like cats and dogs. But listen, just as God does things in the natural, he does it the same way in the supernatural. See, April showers bring May flowers. You're in miracle territory. God's wanting to rain on you right now with his presence in your home, in your life, personally, right where you are. Just lift up your hands and thank him right now because the rain in due season will cause production in the next season. May will be a glorious, an amazing month. June, listen, because the April showers, it doesn't just cause May to have flowers. 
June has flowers. July has flowers. In other words, a good rain season will outlast the drought season. Come on, somebody. Listen, God's going to rain on you right now with his presence, and it will outlast any drought. It could be in the future. In Jesus' name, you're in miracle territory right now. I want to pray with you. You say, Pastor, today I don't even know if I died, heaven be my home, but I want it to be. Maybe you need to rededicate your life to God. Maybe you was serving him, but you got off course. Today's the day for a new beginning. Maybe you want to get water baptized. Maybe you're ready to get connected in a church. I don't believe you're watching by accident. I believe God put you on this streaming or whatever you're watching from on purpose because he's trying to get the help to you right now. You just reach out and receive it. I want to get connected. I want to belong in Jesus' name. If one of those I mentioned is you, friend, pray this prayer out loud with me in Jesus' name. Everybody pray, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. I make you the Lord of my life. I receive you, Jesus. Forgive me of my sin. Thank you for receiving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, we say welcome home. Welcome to the family of God. You belong here. And we just say welcome home. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for praying that prayer. Call the number on that screen right now. Tell the person, I just prayed the prayer. I just received Jesus. Come on, tell somebody. We want to get in agreement with you. We want to help you through the journey that you're on right now. Just call the number on that screen because we want to get in agreement. We want to help you be a part of our next step classes to help you on the journey that you're in. Amen? Listen, church, we're going to pray. We're going to worship just for a moment. And don't click off. Stay right there. And I'm going to come back and close out and have a special prayer. We're going to be praying. So I want you just to stay right there. Let's just worship the Lord for a second before we click offline together. Amen? Come on, let's, let's praise him. He says, let the Lord be magnified. Come on, it's a sacrifice of praise. Let's give it to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is a good God. Listen, I want to close out in prayer here just a second. And I'm asking you this week, uh, 1 Chronicles, I believe, in chapter 14, verse 7, says, if my people that are called by my name, that's you and I, will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, their own trust in themselves, and put their eyes back on me and pray and ask me, I'll hear from heaven, I will heal their land. We got prayer going on, 7 in the morning, 12 at noon. But I'm asking you and I today, this week, to begin to pray for every doctor, every nurse, 
everybody working in the medical field, everybody assisting hospitals at whatever level they are, building hospitals, whatever, driving people to the hospital. Listen, we're in a war zone, and these people are in a war zone. I read stories this last week that nurses got sick with the virus and committed suicide. The stress was so great, the magnitude, they suicide killed themselves. Doctors and people have gotten the virus and died. Listen, God's going to do great things. We're in miracle territory. But what God needs is people praying. You and I, get your mind off the problems and get it on God. He's our helper, our healer, our deliverer right now. I'm going to ask you to join us this week. Pray for all of those. We're going to do it right now, but take it. I mean, and you wake up in the morning, pray for all of them. Lunchtime, pray for all of them. Afternoon, pray for all of them. Listen, if you're bored at home, pray. Pray for every hospital. Pray for every doctor. Pray for all those working on medicine. Pray. That's how God is allowed to get involved. Get your mind off the grocery store, what they didn't have, and get it on the God that supplies all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus in heaven. This thing's going to be over before we know it. And we're going to get through this together in Jesus' name. Father, right now, as people, thousands are streaming and watching, I'm asking them to be in agreement with us right now. You said one could put a thousand, two could put ten thousand. Father, we lift up every doctor, every nurse, every physician, every x-ray person, Lord, everyone driving people, every ambulance driver, every police officer, everybody helping in this area right now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. God, cover them and protect them and help them. Give them grace to endure till change comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, Destiny. We love you. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face shine on you. I call you blessed and favored of Almighty God. This will pass We're coming out on the other side stronger and better than before. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We love you. Don't forget, Wednesday night, Friday night, Good Friday, and next Sunday, Easter, right here, same time, same place. We're going to rejoice. We love you. Bye-bye.